Hello, my name is Kane Peterson from NewTek. Thank you for joining me in this training video on the NewTek Spark product. Uh, over the next few moments, I want to talk about the full Spark line, the differences and uh, similarities between them, and uh, also give some uh, more in-depth uh, showing of how the Spark Pro unit operates. Now, if you're not familiar with what Spark is, uh, Spark is a converter box. You plug in baseband video signals on one side, uh, be it SDI or HDMI, and it will spit out an NDI signal on the other end. So there's a great way to convert uh, existing equipment you have into NDI sources. Now we've had a few Spark products available uh, for a while now, starting with the Spark HDMI and SDI units. And I'm just gonna quickly uh, go through the different um, uh, features you'd find or connectors you'd find on this. Uh, so here's an SDI, the HDMI is basically the same except for the connectors. So if we look at the front, we've got uh, ethernet, if you wanna hook it up wired, we have our baseband inputs. Now it is an input and a pass-through. So it's either HDMI or SDI, depending upon which one it is, uh, but input and pass-through. Then there's analog uh, audio, and this would be an input and pass-through as well. And then finally, a power connector, and the, the power connector comes in the box with it. If we turn it around on the other end, we've got USB and an SD card slot. This is for a recording capability. You can plug in a USB memory stick or an SD card, record right on this unit itself. There is a power connector, and then finally there are two antenna connectors, and the unit does come with the antennas. I, I don't have mine connected right now, but uh, if you wanted to run these wirelessly, you could do that. So that's what we've had available for Spark products for a while, but the new one, and I think the one that, of course, a lot of people are very interested to know more about is the Spark Pro. And I happen to have one of these right here, so this is what the Spark Pro looks like. It's about the same size. Um, if we look at the front, uh, you can't see them right now, but there is uh, tally lights. There's a program in preview that will light up once the unit is uh, uh, connected in. If we look at the bottom of the unit, uh, there is a gigabit Ethernet port. This does support PoE, so you could power it through this port. There's also a USB-C port. This is also another way to power the unit, and the, the unit does come with a uh, power connector and a USB-A to C cable uh, in the box. So um, if you don't have PoE, you can still power it that way. And then finally, there are two uh, eighth inch uh, kind of uh, headphone jacks. One of these is a contact closure for Tally. So if you wanted to hook this to, let's say, a Tally light on the uh, camera, you could do that. The other one is currently unused for future expansion. And then if we flip it around to the other end, we've got a uh, HDMI 2.0 port and a quarter inch uh, analog input. So this is, this is where you plug in your video and audio sources. And then finally, on the back of the unit, we've got a quarter 20 mounting hole. So this is where you would, uh, if you want to connect it to like an articulating arm or your camera rig, you could easily do that. So that is the Spark Pro. Let's take uh, just a closer look here at the, um, the different models here. So again, there's pictures of them. And uh, to kind of just go through them, uh, we'll talk about a, a few of the different uh, aspects you'd find in there. So the first is the maximum resolution of these units. So the, um, the HDMI and SDI Sparks do max out, max out at 1080p 60, whereas the Spark Pro goes all the way up to 4K uh, 60 frame rate. So depending upon what's the video formats, that could be a decision right there as to which Spark unit is right for you. Uh, the type of NDI, the uh, HDMI and SDI Sparks use NDI HX. This is a uh, more efficient ver compression uh, algorithm. Uh, whereas the Spark Pro uses uh, the full bandwidth uh, NDI that like software applications have been using for quite a while now. Now, one difference between those two that you'll find is that uh, the latency does vary. So on the HDMI and SDI Spark, I don't have an exact number because I can't give you an exact number. It depends upon exactly how everything is set. Are you using wired? Are you using wireless? Are you, you know, what video format are you in? What frame rate are you in? All those things will change what the amount of latency will be. But regardless on an SDI or HDMI Spark, it is going to be a few frames um, in there somewhere. The Spark Pro being NDI uh, on a chip is under a frame, and I'm gonna show that to you in a few moments here, how fast that conversion on it is. And then just to go through the last few things in there, as, as I mentioned, um, Tally, uh, all the units do have Tally lights, uh, but the, uh, the Spark Pro does have that external Tally connector. Uh, Network-wise, uh, all of them can hook up wired, uh, but only wireless is available on the HDMI and SDI if you're looking for a wireless device. Uh, when it comes to recording, uh, the 
Spark uh, HDMI and SE, I do again have those ports where you can plug in a memory card and record directly on the unit. The Spark Pro does not offer that feature. And if you do want to record that signal off of it, you're going to have to do it externally. This is a great solution for NDI Isocorder or Isocorder Pro. I mean, remember, NDI Isocorder is a free version that will record two channels on a PC. So that could be a great way to record these signals. Um, we also have uh, PoE support only available on the Spark Pro. And then finally, the screw mount uh, only available on the Spark Pro. You can buy brackets for the other Spark models to kind of give it those kind of connectors and stuff, but on the Spark Pro, it's, it's already built in. So now that we, uh, we have that, let's take a look here at how you would interact with the Spark. So I'm going to um, go in here and open up uh, NDI Studio Monitor, and it's, it's already reconnected up because I just connected the Spark in, but you could see my Spark Pro show up in the list on here, HDMI. And if I needed to configure this unit uh, so that I can set it up to work the way I want, uh, I would just click the gear, just like I would with any other uh, Spark product. When it comes up, here are the settings that are available to me. So I can see exactly what video format I am receiving from my device. And then next to this, where it says uh, 4K video enable, this is where you can set up um, how you want the Spark to report itself. And I want to take a moment and explain this a little more in detail because I think there can be some confusion around this. If your device allows you to uh, force whatever video output that you want. For example, this camera I happen to be working with, I can go in and say, I want 4K video out of it. In that case, this doesn't matter how this button is set. The camera is gonna spit out the 4K video and this is what is gonna be received into the Spark. What this button uh, allows you to do is we, when you plug in a device that automatically configures itself, maybe it's a, a, a device, you plug in the HDMI, it uses the HDMI communication to auto select, um, what resolutions are available or what resolution is going to work with. This will tell that device whether or not um, it is a 4K capable device or not. So if you're working in a 4K workflow with one of those devices, you'd want to turn this on. But let's say you're working um, with a device that maybe does 4K, but you're only working in HD, so you just want to keep everything HD. You could turn this off and then the Spark will just report to that device that is an HD capable device that kind of gives you the ability to kind of configure how you want it to work. Uh, under the audio input, you can tell it whether or not you want digital HDMI audio or analog audio to select which one you want in there. And then under the administration tab, you can set up the uh, group name and channel name. So if you had multiple sparks, you can kind of designate them all with their own information. Firmware version, change your password, update the firmware, reboot the unit. And then there's also all your network settings in there. Again, you can set up for DHCP or static or multicast, depending upon what your needs might be. Now, let's take a quick look uh, in the TriCaster itself. You can see in my unit, I've got uh, a couple inputs going. In, uh, inputs one and two happen to be SDI. Input three is the camera plugged in uh, through the Spark. So actually, two input two is SDI input of the camera. Input three is HDMI through the Spark of the camera into this unit. And what I mainly want to show is a side-by-side -side comparison of how fast the Spark Pro is. So uh, give me one moment here and I'm going to uh, get something to set up my clock here. As soon as I can get my tablet to open, there we go. And so I've got a, uh, a clock that I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold up in front of the camera here and then uh, we'll use this to grab some frame grabs and see what the time difference is between the two sides. So let's, let's take a, a quick uh, look at this here and I'm gonna turn this on to the uh, output so there is um, a side-by-side. -side. We're going to start the clock here, and I'm going to uh, hold this up way in front of the camera so you can see the clock really well, and hit grab a few times on my, uh, my camera. There we go. And now let's take a look at these. I'm just going to throw these up. Um, just, they're just going to be stills here, so let's uh, jump over to uh, those still grabs. So there's, there's the first grab. There's the second grab. And there is the third grab. And you can see in all cases the the time uh, between them were exactly the same. So a Spark Pro has the same performance uh, that you would find with an SDI uh, cable plugged into the unit in there. So I want to thank you for uh, joining me, and I hope this uh, gives you a little bit more information about the different Spark models, which one might be the best for your workflow. And if you have further questions, please reach out to your new tech uh, uh, representative or new tech dealer and they'll be able to uh, help you with further uh, answers to any questions you might have. Thank you.